In the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, Bonds Beyond Time, we get to see one of the most incredible things you could ever ask for. Three main characters from three different generations of Yu-Gi-Oh! all coming together to duel against a united threat. Let's go! And while watching Yugi, Jaden and Yusei play off each other is amazing to see, I have two questions that I'd like to answer for today's video. Out of the three main characters, which one put in the most work? Who would we say is the MVP? And two, did Paradox make any big mistakes in this duel that cost him the duel from misplays or things like that? Or did he play the best duel that he could? All these questions will be answered in today's duel analysis of the Bonds Beyond Time movie duel. But first, some important things to note. Some of you might be asking, how is this duel even possible? Isn't you say from like decades in the future? And while yes, that is true, Paradox you see is from the even more distant future where human civilization has been destroyed by the Mechlord Emperor Genocide. Paradox was one of the last few survivors of his time. And as a last ditch attempt to save the future, he sends a robotic version of his younger self back to the past to destroy the original source of the apocalypse, which was of course, a children's card game. Duel Monsters. However, before he goes through with this, he scoops up some of the most powerful dragons throughout history. Although, by doing so, he inadvertently alerts both Yusei and Jaden onto his plans, giving them a chance to go back in time to Yugi's era and join forces in order to stop him in his tracks. And it is here that our 3v1 duel begins. The duel is structured so that Paradox takes every other turn, while each protagonist takes one turn each before resetting. Basically, it's... First Yusei goes, then I go, then Jaden goes, then I go, Wait. then Yugi goes, and then I go. That means we each get one turn per round, and you get, like, a, a gajillion. I'm glad you understand. Now, the fairness of this duel structure might be worth at least addressing, because there's some advantages given to each side, depending on how you really look at this duel. For instance, Paradox gets three turns, while each protagonist gets only one. Saying that though, the protagonists get a combined starting hand of 15, while Paradox only has five. Then again, the protagonists do have to share a field and life points, meaning they only have five monster zones and five spell and trap zones to share between them all. Which, if you've ever played in a random tag duel, you know can sometimes be a recipe for disaster. So all in all, the duel is set up as barely as it possibly can be, really. In fact, checking in with you guys, you all seem to agree that this duel is as fair as it is unfair, which makes it fair. Or unfair. For both, I guess. So, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the duel. The duel begins and Paradox takes the first move. He draws and we see his opening hand. It consists of Malefic World, Malefic Cyber End Dragon, Malefic Claw Stream, Malefic Selector, Malefic Paradigm Shift, and Malefic Tune. He begins by playing his field spell, Malefic World, with its effect guaranteeing him a random Malefic Monster every draw phase. This effect differs from the real world version, as in the real world version, you choose three cards from your deck and they can be any Malefic card you want, and you add one of them at random. Whereas this one is exclusively monsters and it's just completely random which one it adds. In fact, the anime Malefic cards are very, very different from the real world counterparts. When Malefics are summoned, the originals go to the grave instead of being banished. You can have as many Malefics as you want on the field instead of just one, and some Malefics retain their original version's effects. Now, with Malefic World live on the field, Paradox sends his Cyber End Dragon from his extra deck to the grave to summon its Malefic form, Malefic Cyber End Dragon. He ends by setting his Malefic tune face down. Now it's the protagonist's turn, and Yusei goes first. His opening hand consists of Reincarnation of Hope, Sonic Chick, Quillbolt Hedgehog, Junk Synchron, Miracles Wake, and Stardust Mirage. He begins by playing his spell, Reincarnation of Hope, which lets him discard two cards, and then, during the second standby phase, he can add any monster from his deck to his hand. He sends Sonic Chick and Quillbolt Hedgehog. He then summons Junk Synchron, whose effect lets him summon Sonic Chick back from the grave. Now, with a tuner on the field, he revives Quillbolt Hedgehog, resulting in six stars total. He then Synchro summons into Junk Gardener. He ends by setting two cards face down, Miracles Wake and Stardust Mirage. Back to Paradox, and instead of drawing, he adds a random Malefic to the hand. He gets Malefic Rainbow Dragon, 
which he immediately summons to the field by sending the original rainbow from his deck to the grave. This is a crucial moment in the duel. It could be considered a misplay. I'll talk a little bit why it might be a bit later, but just keep this rainbow dragon in mind for later. Paradox attacks Junk Gardener with rainbow dragon. However, Yusei uses Gardner's ability to switch the attacking monster into defense. This was a calculated move on Paradox's behalf, as now he can attack with Malefic Cyber End Dragon, which will not only destroy Junk Gardner, but also deal piercing battle damage, thanks to its anime version's effect. However, this is where Junk Gardner's second ability kicks in. It also switches Cyber End into defense after its destruction. Yusei then chains Miracle Wake at the end of the battle phase, which lets him special summon the destroyed monster back to the field. Paradox ends by setting Malefic Claw Stream face down. You're gonna notice a theme within this duel for the protagonists. Every time their main monsters gets destroyed, they usually come back, and that's kind of their game plan. They keep always having field presence, basically. That's that's the strategy they're going for. Now it's Jaden's turn. His opening hand consists of Polymerization, Elemental Hero Neos, Hero Barrier, Elemental Mirage, Flute of Summoning Karibo, and Neos Spiral Force. Straight away he plays Polymerization, and since all the protagonists are sharing one field, he fuses Neos with Junk Gardener to make Elemental Hero Neos Knight. Through its effect, it gains attack equal to half of Junk Gardener's, giving it 3200 attack. And not only that, it also has an extra attack. So, it attacks and destroys both Malefic Cyber End and Malefic Rainbow Dragon. Which, fun fact, are the two monsters that Paradox stole from Jaden's timeline. Fitting he should be the one to destroy them. Now some observant viewers might be saying, wait a minute, why didn't Paradox use his face down Malefic Claw Stream to destroy Neo Knight when it was summoned or when it was attacking? Well, in the anime, Claw Stream can only be activated if there is a Malefic Synchro monster on the field, so Paradox actually couldn't use the trap here. However, Paradox does play his other trap, Malefic Tune, which, since a Malefic was destroyed, it allowed him to draw two cards from the top of his deck, which were Malefic Parallel Gear and Malefic Force. Jaden ends by setting four cards face down, Hero Barrier, Elemental Mirage, Flute of Summoning Karibo, and Neos Spiral Force. And keep in mind, this means that the spell and trap zones are completely full. And what that means is if nothing is used by the time Yugi's turn comes to play, he can't activate any spells or traps, leaving him with less tactics really. It's Paradox's turn and he draws again through Malefic World. This time he gets Malefic Stardust Dragon. He immediately summons it by sending Stardust to the grave from his extra deck. He then normal summons Malefic Parallel Gear, and tunes it with Stardust to make the level 10 Synchro Malefic Paradox Dragon, which, when it hits the field, is able to special summon any Synchro monster in the grave, ignoring its summoning conditions. Now, all the face-up monsters the opponent controls lose attack equal to the total attack of all face-up Synchro monsters Paradox controls that aren't Paradox Dragon. Paradox then attacks Neos Knight, but Jaden activates Hero Barrier, negating the attack. Now, Paradox plays his Claw Stream to destroy Neos Knight. Looking in this play in hindsight, it made more sense for Paradox to use Claw Stream first, destroy the monster, then potentially attack for game. So why he didn't, I'm unsure about. It doesn't really matter since the result would have occurred, as now since an elemental hero was destroyed by a card effect, Jaden activates his face down elemental mirage, resummoning Neos back to the field. Perfect counter. Paradox is unable to attack with Stardust due to Malefic World's effect, so he ends his turn by setting two cards face down, Malefic Force and Malefic Paradigm Shift. Now it's Yugi's turn. His opening hand consists of Ancient Rules, Bonds Between Teacher and Student, Magic Gate of Miracles, Dark Magic Twin Burst, Dark Spiral Force, and Defusion. However, since two turns had passed since Yusei used Reincarnation of Hope, its effect allowed Yugi to add Dark Magician from his deck to his hand. Yugi then activates Ancient Rules to summon Dark Magician, then plays Bond between Teacher and Student to summon Dark Magician Girl from his deck in defense position. And it is here that Yusei and Yugi share a moment. Now, with two spellcasters, he uses Magic Gate of Miracles, which lets him change one attack position monster paradox controls the defense, and then take control of it. Also, the monster taken cannot be destroyed by battle. Paradox assumes Yugi's gonna snatch Paradox Dragon because it is the more powerful monster on the field, and so he chains Malefic Force to make it immune to opponent's spell cards. However, Yugi instead chooses Stardust Dragon 
bringing it to the protagonist's side of the field. And now, with no synchro monsters, Paradox Dragon's reduction effect is removed from all monsters affected. Yugi then plays Dark Magic Twin Burst, which increases the attack of Dark Magician with Dark Magician Girl's attack. He then attacks and destroys Paradox Dragon. Paradox then activates his last face down. Malefic Paradigm Shift, which by paying half of his life points allows him to summon his ultimate monster, Malefic Truth Dragon. Yugi ends by setting two cards face down, Dark Spiral Force and Defusion. It's the penultimate turn and the most crucial moment in the duel. Paradox draws through his field spell and gets Malefic Red Eyes Black Dragon. He then activates Malefic Selector, letting him remove from play two Malefic Monsters in his graveyard to add Malefic Divide and Malefic Blue Eyes White Dragon. He summons both of these monsters by sending their counterparts from the deck to the grave. He enters his battle phase and first attacks with Red Eyes to destroy Dark Magician Girl with it revealed that Truth Dragon will destroy all monsters the opponent controls if any Malefic destroys a card by battle. On top of this, it will also deal 800 damage for each one destroyed. Hearing this though, Jaden plays Yugi's face down Defusion, splitting his Neos Knight back into Neos and Junk Gardener. Now with Gardener on the field, Fusei is able to use its effect to switch Malefic Red Eyes into defense before it can destroy Dark Magician Girl. Paradox then attacks with Malefic Blue Eyes, targeting Dark Magician. This time the attack is successful, and as all the monsters are about to be destroyed, Yusei quickly uses his Stardust's ability to tribute itself to negate the destruction and instead destroy Truth Dragon. However, Paradox uses Truth Dragon's other effect to keep it alive by banishing a Malefic in the grave. He banishes Rainbow Dragon to do this. Now, with one final attack left, Malefic Truth Dragon attacks Neos who is in defense position. The attack is successful, and so Dark Magician Girl and Junk Gardener are destroyed, inflicting 1,600 damage, leaving them with only 500 life points left. But Paradox is not done. He activates Malefic Divide, letting him special summon Malefic Stardust from the grave, but it will only stay till the end phase. Stardust attempts to attack directly for game, but Jaden plays the Flute of Summoning Karibo, letting Yugi add Karibo straight to his hand to negate the battle damage. The end phase occurs and Malefic Stardust is banished, while the real Stardust returns through its effect. Which fun fact, this is actually an illegal move. Stardust Dragon was never actually successfully summoned, it was brought out through other means basically. This means it can't actually be special summoned from the graveyard. It's the same thing that happens if you use a Starlight Road to summon a Stardust Dragon. If you use that Stardust Dragon's ability, it'll go to the grave but it can't come back. That's basically how it works. But it's the anime, the Malefic version was brought out some, maybe technically it was brought out for real, eh, it's fine. Now with Stardust, Yusei uses Stardust Mirage to return all monsters destroyed this turn back to the field. We'll come back to this turn, don't you worry. Now it's back to Yusei's turn. He draws, but he doesn't even need it. All the pieces for victory are already on the field. Jaden activates his face down Neos Spiral Force, which doubles the attack of Stardust to 5000, however Neos isn't allowed to attack. Yugi then uses his face down Dark Spiral Force, which also doubles the attack of Stardust to 10,000, however Dark Magician isn't allowed to attack. Now with a 10k monster, Yusei uses Stardust to attack and destroy Malefic Truth Dragon, winning the protagonists, the duel. So after watching that whole duel and reverse engineering what everybody had in their hands and everything, I have determined that Paradox has two potential opportunities for victory in this duel. The first one was in the second turn. This was when he drew Malefic Rainbow Dragon. Many of you might not know this, but Malefic Rainbow Dragon in the anime actually has Rainbow Dragon's ability as well. Which is that during either player's turn, you can send all other monsters you control to the graveyard to have this card gain a thousand attack for each Malefic monster sent. Also, you can remove from play all Malefic monsters in your graveyard to shuffle all cards on the field into the deck. It's that second effect that we are most interested in here. Say Paradox just didn't summon Malefic Rainbow Dragon straight away and just held on to it a little bit. That second effect would have been huge. Jaden fills his entire back row with all those cards, they have monsters on the field, you summon out this rainbow dragon, banish all of the malefics in the graveyard and just wipe the entire field. Now all you need to do is just draw any of the 3000 attack points or more monsters which you know you have in that deck because you've got loads of them, just attack directly once and that's game. It's a good idea 
in theory. However, the problem with this strategy is that even if we have a strong monster in hand, Rainbow Dragon will bounce the field spell back into the deck, meaning that Paradox actually won't be able to summon his Malefic monster because you need the field spell on the field. So he'll either need to randomly draw his field spell back or potentially use his Malefic Selector that he has in his hand. By banishing two monsters in his graveyard, he can add any two Malefic cards from his deck to his hand. So he could have a powerful monster and his field spell back. But the problem with that is we've just banished all of the Malefic monsters in the grave. So unfortunately, this strategy does not work. This is busted. He couldn't have started the chain of victory on his second turn, unfortunately. Never mind. However, fun fact, if Paradox is simply not attacked during his second turn, then no matter what Jaden did during his turn, even if he makes Neos Knight, he still wouldn't have been able to get over the two Malefic monsters since they both have 4k attack, meaning they live. And Paradox is off to a much better start in the duel. This is a classic case of less equals more. But now this is the real one. The second potential win is during the penultimate turn. It all begins after Red Eyes is switched to defense due to Junk Gardener's effect. Instead of attacking with Blue Eyes, he could have chosen to attack next with his 4,000 attack point monster and chosen Dark Magician, which was in attack mode. He could have dealt 2,500 damage. Then, you say would have negated the destruction with Stardust, and then Blue Eyes can attack the defense position monster Neos, then everything would have exploded, and Paradox would have won. However, in this scenario, Jaden would have used his Flute of Summoning Kribo a little bit earlier. So what would have happened is, Truth Dragon attacks Dark Magician, Jaden plays Flute of Summoning Kribo, Yugi discards Kribo, no battle damage. The explosion occurs, but Stardust negates. Blue Eyes then attacks Neos, Neos is destroyed, and then Dark Magician Girl and Junk Gardener are destroyed, dealing 1600 damage, which leaves them with 800 life points left. Paradox then revives Malefic Stardust Dragon, attacks, and well, with no more defense and no Stardust Dragon on the field to use Mirage with, it's game. Think Paradox. If you'd have just taken a step back and looked at the turn, you could have guaranteed yourself a win in this duel. Although, maybe not. In a shocking twist, it was actually the protagonists who misplayed. Yes, believe it or not, Yugi, Jaden, and Yusei already had game, and they could have won this turn if they really wanted to. Maybe they were just playing with Paradox. Who knows? But how, you might be asking? They had game as soon as Paradox decided to attack Dark Magician. But you see, two cards that are face down that some of you might have forgotten about are their Spiral Forces, which doubles the attack of a monster. So, when Paradox says, Yo, Blue Eyes, pick up the Red Eyes left off. All they need to do is chain Neo Spiral Force and Dark Spiral Force onto Dark Magician to give it 10,000 attack and win during Paradox's battle phase. The end. I mean, who cares about the drawback of these cards? Neos can't attack and Dark Magician can't attack. Who cares? They're being attacked into. That's not a problem. So to answer the question posed today, could Paradox have won this duel? I mean, he could have played a little bit better, but most likely, no. His fate was pretty much sealed in that penultimate turn, so... No. And if I had to answer who I felt was the MVP of the duel on the protagonist side, then I would say all of them. They all put the work in. They all added something to this duel that was either to protect themselves or to go on the offensive. Jaden took down two 4k monsters in one turn. However, he was only able to do so because Yusei manipulated Paradox's monsters. And as well, he actually tanked two deadly attacks too. Yugi was able to deal with Paradox's first boss monster. However, it was Yusei who had helped him get his Dark Magician to his hand which was what instigated all the plays. And Jaden did do that clutch move with the Flute of Summoning Karibo, saving them at the last possible second. However, I guess it was Yugi's Karibo. And I guess you say did have the Stardust play that kept all of their monsters alive for a turn, which kept them in the game. But Yugi was the one who got it back for him. And of course the 10k monster at the end, but everyone contributed towards that. Basically, they're all MVPs. And I asked you guys in my community poll, you all thought that it was Yusei to be fair. I mean, Fair enough. If you disagree, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to know. But other than that, that was another duel analysis done. And the final movie duel analysis. If you want to see more of these for main series duels, the plan was to do all the movie duels and that was going to be it. But this series has been doing really well. And if you would like to see duels from the anime, think Raphael versus Yugi. Give the video a like if you would like to see more of these. And that's the only way that I'll know to make more. But other than that, Thank you all for watching, you've all been awesome.
Catch you next time. Bye, everyone.